RNA is, everyone knows about RNA now. It's quite a, a well-known yeah. thing because of the genetic... Yeah, all the school kids learn about it. The genetic yeah. vaccines or whatever you want yeah. to call them. Um, how comfortable are you with the massive swing over to RNA technology that we're seeing? I mean, RNA is good, you know, it's part of human design. Mm. God made RNA. It's, yeah. just, it's just the way it's supposed to be. But humans have, like, taken it and jiggled around with it a bit and they're using it to almost uh, entice or some might say con the body into making new proteins. Yeah. And we're, we're getting... Like in my country, there's huge investment in, in these RNA technologies, and in your country as well. Everyone seems to be going flat out for this RNA technology, injecting this in lipid nanoparticles, getting the body to make its... its the, the, the proteins, not that the body wants to make, the coatings, proteins that are coded for by this, what you might call, alien outside RNA. Um, and everyone seems to be going flat out for this. I mean, are, are we comfortable with this at the moment, or um, is the questions <clears throat> to answer? I think this, John, is an example of where uh, a new technology has blinded uh, all of us. Right. And we have an exciting new technology achieving no more, no less, or maybe less than we were getting from good old ground up bugs if we go back to vaccines. Yep. Yeah, yep. We'd grind the bug up so it's dead. Yep. We would give the person the protection from infection yep. without actually getting the infection. Yep. Good old what we call antigen based vaccines. Yep. Now, uh, I've said this for a long time and no one has wanted to debate me on this, that we did not need messenger RNA to no. make the vaccines no. and that's been proven. Um, we kind of reinvented the wheel and came up with we, something that was square. We imposed on over half the world's population yeah, yeah, a technology yeah. that had not been tested and still yeah. has not been tested. Uh, we, we, it, it's, it's been um, extraordinary. Oh, we don't even make them more quickly. We're, we're so far behind in yeah. terms of the modern, uh, the most recent uh, COVID uh, messenger RNA vaccine uh, that uh, we've... We've moved on to two or three um, mutations, variants, mutations. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know the suggestion is we've had a much more prolonged pandemic than say the 1918 19 yeah. pandemic, which yeah. was short, sharp, and nasty, yeah. but was over in two yeah. years. Yeah. Uh, and the same with uh, the 56 and 68 um, flu in, in pandemics. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that they come and they go, um, but ours has been protracted. Um, now, to what extent the vaccines have contributed to that, we don't know. Mm. It, it, it's so much we don't know. Mm. The red flags are flying mm. and we're not looking at those mm. red flags. Mm. But I, I think getting back to the uh, vaccines, look, I can see a day when messenger RNA is going to be extraordinary, life-saving, fantastic technology, yeah. just like monoclonal antibodies have. But those early, remember back the early days, uh, most people who are watching this mm. uh, will, will know about monoclonal antibodies yeah. used it. It's changed, rheumatoid disease. You mm. don't see people much mm. now in wheelchairs. Mm. Mm. Um, it's changed to a lesser extent, inflammatory bowel disease, yeah. uh, psoriasis, yeah. uh, a whole range of different conditions. Mm. Um, but it took a long while yeah. to actually bed this down, and yeah. we still run into problems. And it wasn't rushed them. through as an emergency, it was yeah. a more and evolutionary process. Here we process. are, you know, we've got a pandemic and potentially involving everyone in the, on the globe, and we've got something special for you. Uh, we've got messenger RNA. Well, you can't control the amount of antigen. No. If you're making no. an antigen for, say, tetanus or, or influenza, yep. you have precise amounts of yep. antigen. You've worked out how much you need to give. Mm. When you put a genetic probe into the body, that's going to every cell in the... As we now know, we didn't know when we started doing this, mm. but we now know, mm. it goes into every cell. Mm. So every cell, uh, the ribosomes, those factories we were talking mm. about, is taken over preferentially yeah. by the new messenger RNA. No one knows yeah. what happens by taking away the normal function of the cell. Never discussed. But we put Point. the new messenger, which has got a, a pseudouridine, a, a, it's got a, 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 an artificial base. It's one of the four bases, but it's an artificial one. It's not yeah, the real it, it one. It makes it work much better. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but it also causes problems, yeah. uh, which we may or may not get onto. But the... Um, What's what's happening? It's going to every cell in the body. Yeah. So every cell now is expressing this protein, yeah. and it's no surprise that you're 
you're getting a, a different dose ratio yeah. um, with, I mean, 101 immunology says yeah. um, the amount of immune response you get is very much dependent on the amount of antigen stimulating that response. Of course. And if you have a very small amount or a large amount of antigen, you get less immune response. It's a, a curve like that. Yeah. And uh, we don't know where on the curve this is, and it's going to vary person to person. Right. And this is one of the reasons we're running into issues and problems of downregulation of immunity mm. in people who have had three or more mm. uh, vaccines. Mm. Uh, but again, we don't want to discuss that, do we? We, uh, we need to be free to discuss this. I mean, it could be that, who knows, it could be that if you inject me and inject you, I make <coughs> 10 times more than you, yeah. or 100 times, or 1,000 times. That's right. We simply don't know. Well, well I think w w one of the things that, that really people need to understand is a, a rushed Nobel Prize last yes, year yes. was given to two individuals, yes. one of whom had been very involved in the pseudouridine, saying, yes. wow, it's going to make a bit. Um, within three months, I think it was the Cambridge group in, in, here in England, mm. uh, showed that 30% of the readings, you know, with the messenger RNAs coming up to the ribosome and you're reading this out to make proteins, one in three, basically, of the readings is mis misread. Wow. So you're producing a different protein. So you're not even producing the protein that you're supposed to be producing. You're producing who knows what the heck. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And in 10% of the people the Cambridge group looked at, they could identify in blood these strange non-required proteins. And probably never and seen before. Through proteins. this misreading of the genetic mm. code because they've inserted a foreign uh, a, a nucleotide to make it work better and get into the cell, work better, yeah. uh, and give you a, a better immune response. All of these, no one wants to know about mm. the, these things. And there's presumably tens of thousands or millions of different proteins that could potentially be made. Exactly. And we know some of them form um, what's called a, a beta pleated sheet. It, it yeah. forms a, a particular structure yeah. that when it deposits in the body is insoluble and mm. forms a substance called amyloid. Yeah. And, and um, that just sits there. Yeah. And I think, I think it was Japan where they found 2%. There was a 2% increase incidence of some forms of uh, dementia. Mm. And cognitive defects mm. were even more mm. frequently found. And now, of course, we don't the, know that this is the, the, the cause, but yeah. it correlates and needs to be investigated and confirmed. And the cognitive defects often come before frank, obvious dementia. Exactly. I think it was something like 10%, a 10% increase in reported older people, or not just older people, getting cognitive defects, which can be a precursor for Alzheimer's, uh, which is the type of dementia that was increased. Very scary stuff, but not, yeah. not proven, no. but um, it's there to be worked out. It's a red flag. We should be erring on the side of caution. That's what medicine should be all about. We don't need not to not harm. err on caution. Yeah, so it's a fascinating technology. Let's, let's experiment with it, but not on human beings at this stage. Let's start at a much earlier... Well, well let's sort out the problems. Yeah, uh, and, absolutely. Uh, and we you've... don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, well, well, but we well, don't want you, to... You, you, most people would have, or many people would have noticed that uh, in different countries, uh, most recently in Australia, we have found that if you look at the batches of yeah. messenger RNA yeah. that have been made, um, the three batches of Australian that were tested had up to, I think it was 150 or uh, times the upper limit yeah. of contamination yeah. of by D DNA, DNA coming DNA from, from the bacteria. It's not supposed were, to make at all. Absolutely, it should so, be all so, cleaned out. So not only is the question about the fundamental science, which is interesting, let, let's investigate. Fascinating. That, that's what medical research does, but let's not inject people with it at the moment, thank you very much. And also the manufacturing process is simply not there yet. We need a way of manufacturing this as pure RNA without the <coughs> DNA contamination. Yeah. And that's not there. And yet we're ploughing ahead with these programmes. We've got massive factories, massive investment. And now the money's been invested and in, in spent and people have been paid to do this research. The, it, it, people might be reluctant to say, well, you know what, that money you've given me for that research, I don't want it after yeah. all. I, I think, well, just, I, I again, I can really instead. only talk about my country, but yeah. in my state of New South Wales, uh, as I understand it, uh, every university has been brought together yeah. in a program to make all sorts of new vac messenger RNA vaccines, yeah. none yeah. of which yeah. are needed. 
No, no. one has ever said, oh, here's an advantage mm-hmm. over grind up mm-hmm. uh, uh, bacteria or a virus or, mm-hmm. or um, cloned antigens. You know, there are more sophisticated ways yeah. of doing it. But yeah. what I'm calling antigen vaccines. Yeah, it's basically an antigen, yeah. And, and in, in Sydney <laughs> at the moment, um, every university uh, is part and parcel mm-hmm. of these uh, production when we haven't even sorted out the safety issues yeah. in COVID. It's beyond imagination. Yeah. yeah. Beyond imagination. It really is. And interesting that you've got that longitudinal view. Now, uh, much more to come from Professor Clancy. That was just the the warm-up. We're going to talk next about another individual that he met called... uh, Oh, what was the name again? It was Tony someone. Might have been Fauci. But (laughs) next video, we'll come back on that one. Thank you for now.